Mana Mission is a dream come true. Mana Mission is a ministry that provides a unique blend of effective evangelism, Christ-centered, compassionate medical care, and strategic community development. This has been a long childhood dream of Seth Ablor since his childhood at Quaymon and Teshi. The one who reinforced that dream was Ni Ajay Ali, Seth's grandfather, a prominent herbalist and fisherman. He always told Seth, when you grow up, you should be a doctor. Seth had promised his grandfather that he would be a doctor. A promise made to a grandfather, even when he was dead, could not be broken. The Lord opened doors for this African boy to go to the United States to study medicine. While studying at Oral Roberts University and later conducting his family practice residency at St. Elizabeth Hospital in Chicago, Illinois, Dr. Ablor shared his dream with churches, organizations, and friends. Three decades ago, that dream was birthed in Ghana, specifically at Teshi, where the Military Academy and the Kofi Annan International Peacekeeping Training Center are located. The Bible says a prophet is without honor in his own country. Mana Mission's concept of showing the love of Jesus in a demonstrable way met many obstacles in Teshi, but it prevailed. The groundbreaking ceremony for the establishment of Mana Mission was performed at Teshi Shriblo on a 32-acre donated land. It was on the 4th of July, 1988, when the late chancellor and evangelist Oral Roberts planted a cross and gave Seth to his people so he could be a blessing to many. Oral Roberts that day prophesied, saying, Someday we expect that there will be a great city in this place, a great hospital, a place where prayer and medicine is merged. A great spiritual revival will break out and the door will open through the gospel in areas where it has been closed. People will be healed, cured, saved, and filled with the Holy Spirit. The final event done by Evangelist Oral Roberts was a parked crusade at the Accra Sports Stadium. It literally shook Accra. Those present included the Archbishop Duncan Williams, Benny Moon, Carlton Pearson, and the late Nigerian evangelist E. Dahosa. As prophesied by the late Oral Roberts, the revival sparked off in our Jerusalem, then to Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the world through large national programs like the National School of Ministry with Dr. Morris Krulo, crusades with Richard Roberts and Papa Billy Labanza of Zambia, the Living Mana radio broadcast, the Living Mana TV, and Ghana for Jesus Crusades. Mana Mission has touched a lot of lives in Ghana and beyond. These include Zambia, Tanzania, DR Congo, Gabon, Cameroon, Nigeria, Benin, Togo, Ivory Coast, Liberia, Sierra Leone, South Africa, Kenya, France, USA, and the United Kingdom. Mana Mission Church has grown from a small group of believers meeting at the reception hall of the old Mana Hospital building into a 2,200 strong and active member church with 20 branches. Mana Bible Institute has graduated 650 students. Mana Mission Hospital statistics for 30 years is as follows. OPD, outpatient department, visits 687,245. Admissions, 76,729. 13,502 babies delivered and 10,008 surgeries done. Mana Mission Academy has enrolled a total of 4,938 and graduated 303 students. Some of the junior high school's graduates gained admission to academically prestigious senior high schools in Ghana. These include Prosec Ligon Mfansisipin, Achimota St. Rose's Senior High School, Tima Secondary School, and Archbishop Porter Girls. Ebenezer and beyond. We thank God for bringing us this far, Ebenezer. We believe our best days are ahead of us. God has set open doors for us. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it, for you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Revelations 3 and 8. 
Our challenge is to forget the past. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. And focus on our future, according to Paul. Not that I have already attained, or am I already perfect, but I press on that I may lay hold for that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold for me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus, Philippians 3, 12 to 14. We believe our God can do above what we ask or think. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, Ephesians 3 and 20. To God be the glory. God bless our homeland, Ghana. God bless Mana Mission. God bless us all. In Jesus' name, amen. We want to welcome this morning the Reverend Dr. Seth Ablor from the Mana Mission Church. What a mighty, what a mighty man of God. Amen. We have on stage with, with me our mission pastor, uh, another great man of God, and uh, Dr. Anthony. So Dr. Anthony, if you could just uh, share just for a moment uh, uh, how you met Dr. Abelor and, uh, and then how you have continued that relationship uh, by taking us with you uh, on the mission field. Um, so in 2011, I was taken on my first mission trip with uh, Northview Church to Ghana. And um, with my nurse practitioner that I was working with, she um, had been going for several years through Northview and um, said they needed an OBGYN to go. And um, they, she actually, two years before that is when I joined the practice and she wanted me to go like as soon as I got there and I said, I can't. <laughs> have to start working. So in 2011, I started going and God showed me, um, actually, when I was in medical school, God showed me a vision to um, take mission teams or to spread the gospel through medicine. And I had no idea how that was going to work. And then I met this nurse practitioner, Jody Dill, who had been doing that. And that just opened the door. So in 11, I went and, um, and God said at that time, don't just be here, take notes, listen, watch, um, have conversations. And I ended up with a little private time with Dr. Ablor and he did his Dr. Ablor thing. And <laughs> the next year I uh, took my first missionary with, uh, with uh, Pastor Jeff. And um, he was my, he was my uh, test subject, if you will. <laughs> so in 2012, I brought uh, him with me w with uh, Northview, and then at that time, God said, you know, this is the last time that you'll come with someone. The next time you come here, you'll be taking a team. And um, as soon as I got back, I sat down with Dr. Moore, and I, I let him know what the vision was, what God gave me. And um, it was very interesting, because he said, wow, I've been, um, ever since he had gone in 2005, Dr. Moore had said, had wondered how was he going to get a team over there? How was he going to make an impact on, in the West Coast of Africa? And he said to me, wow, this, this must be it. And um, he, he fully supported the vision. And I see some of my first, first missionaries <laughs> that went with us. We took a team of 12. And um, can you all stand up? The first, the, if you went the very first time in 2013... And um, New Era has just been so supportive and, and, and wonderful in sending and, and praying and gathering and sending and praying and gathering and sending and praying and gathering till now we have gone uh, five times.
Thank you, Dr. Sanders. Um, you know, our mission um, is to evangelize the lost and edify the saved and to minister to those in need and to be a conscious in our community. And so part of that mission, of course, is, um, is um, international. And so um, we are really blessed today to have a man I call a modern day Paul as you saw uh, from the video, he has led and has established ministries all over the world. So I want to ask Dr. Abloh, he's gonna, he's gonna preach in just a moment, but I want him to share a little bit about, um, you've been in America, you've been in Russia, you've been in, in Europe, you've been all over the world spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, would you just talk a little bit your time at Oral Roberts and how, uh, when did you get your spiritual beginning? Thank you, Pastor Moore. First, I want to thank you yes. and the church for sending the team. Thank you. You know, there's a song that says, I dreamt I went to heaven. And as the saints were coming, somebody was saying, thank you for coming to my Sunday school mm. and teaching me. So I want to thank you for sending the team. Yes. May God richly bless you. You. And bless all those that participated through prayer. Amen. Amen. I was raised in a little village outside Accra. And we didn't have any running water, no uh, public flush toilet. I remember as a boy, I was in this big latrine. Do you understand what is latrine? Yes. Big duck toilet. And as a boy, my school shorts fell in the thing. And um, I didn't know what to do because I have a little pencil in front of me that I don't want the young ladies to see. <laughs> <laughs> so I stayed in the toilet and used a bamboo to pick that thing up. And it was heavier when it came up than when it went in. And washed it the next day I was in the school uniform. But I remember the aeroplanes flying over my farm. Mm. And I would tell my mother, one day I'll fly in this aeroplane. And she would say, if they sold all the land belonging to Abdullah J, it would never pay my ticket. Mm. It was just impossible. But I had a dream in my heart. So one day I gained Russian scholarship, went to Soviet Union, and showed my mother the ticket. And I don't know how many times I've flown that aeroplane. Oh, wow. But a dream started in that village. Where there is a need, there's always a dream. And, and God has given each one of you a dream. So when I went to Soviet Union, I already had God inside. I, I, I don't want you to do that, but I smuggled Bible across. KGB arrested me, yes. deported me, but in all these things, I'm more than a conqueror. Yeah. Then I came to Tennessee State University, where at least I always born and will always be born. <laughs> and it was a challenge. Went to Mehari to do some courses. So I kind of watched Anthony. He's following the steps I followed. And I pray God will lift him up to another level. I know if you may lose him or gain him in new era, only God will tell. But in ORU, when they were admitting me, I told they brought a camera. They said they need about 30 people in the school. And there were over 300 people for the interview. And they had scholarship from Navy, Air Force, and they didn't have money. So I look in the camera and I said, you're looking at a boy, if you choose him, you will rejoice the rest of your life. And if you don't choose him, you will regret the rest of the life. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I know what I was saying. So I was chosen. And today my professor wrote to me and said, we made the right decision to choose you. I work here in Indianapolis on 10th, 10th Street, North Girls School Road, 
uh, immediate care center by Dr. Bishop from Bloomingdale. But when I took my first mission trip, I lost the Indianapolis dream. It was boring for me working here. I mean, I was treating poison ivy, allergies, while people were sick, congestive heart failure, and I was just treating poison ivy with steroid and cream. <laughs> so I took off and left. Hallelujah. But somehow God still got me connected to Indianapolis through Pastor Paino, Tom Paino. He kind of believed in my dream. And then his son, Tommy Paino, is going to be with the Lord. He had a Lugerian's disease. And then from then on, they connected me to Anthony. So I feel like it's a divine appointment. Uh, and I owe a lot of thanks to you. You know, we call him Ajete. Is that an African name? African name. Ajete. Ajete Kofi. Ajete he's Kofi. born Kofi the day, and his firstborn, so Ajete. Uh, and we call his wife Ajele Ama. So they are with us. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she can dance like the Africans dance. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we're not surprised. <laughs> Well, Dr. Eblor, I tell you, you know, we've heard, we have a saying that God saved us from the gutter to the utmost. We didn't realize you literally started in the gutter of that latrine. Uh, <laughs> that tells us that no matter where we are, God can find us. Even when we're in a messy situation, right? <laughs> well, we want to hear a word from Dr. Eblor. Uh, Kenneth, if you would bring that uh, podium here, and uh, I asked him just to come and share a word with us. Uh, we are praying, as you can see, uh, they are celebrating 30 years of, uh, of ministry uh, there. And we are celebrating almost 30 years of ministry here at New Era. And so, uh, without any further ado, I want to introduce to you one of God's great soldiers, the Reverend Dr. Seth Abelor. Hallelujah. Well, that clap it's for me, but let's do one for Jesus. Hey, it is your hand. Tell your friend it is your hand. It's not the devil's hand. Come on, glorify the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Shout somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm home now. Is that correct? I'm back home. I can hear a shout. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, Jesus speaking, he said, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. That you bear fruit, John 15, 16. You didn't choose me, I chose you. And he said, while you were in your mother's womb, I chose you, and I anointed you, and ordained you. Somebody say, he chose me. One of the amazing guys he mentioned it, that God chose is the Apostle Paul. The Bible records how he persecuted the church, how he thought he was right, arrested people, sent them to jail. Now, one day he had obtained a document to go to Damascus, and arrest some people. And he had this authority from the government. Amen? And he was going to arrest the men. And he had on his list by alphabetical order the man called Ananias. He was on his death row list to kill him. But on the way, he said a light 
brighter than the sun. Is anything brighter than the sun? Shone upon him, and he fell down. And he heard in the Hebrew language, Jesus speaking to him. He became blind, and God said, I've appeared unto you for this purpose, to make you a minister. I'm sending you to the Gentiles to open their eyes and preach salvation to them, that they will be part of God's family and gain an inheritance. But see, his believers in Jerusalem didn't believe him. He's done so much bad things, they couldn't take him as a believer. Is that today true in some time? But you never judge anybody, amen? Now, he became blind and was taken, and the Bible says from Acts chapter 9, verse 10, now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias, and he said, here I am, Lord. So the Lord said, arise and go to the street called Straight. God knows direction more than the global position people, amen? Tell anybody, he knows where you are. And inquire at that house of Judas for one called Saul of Tars, for behold, he's praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. But whatever Ananias had heard was history. What he didn't know is less than 24 hours ago, the man changed. Amen? Your neighbor will change. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, look at me very well. You may not recognize me tomorrow. <laughs> He's saying, regarding my being, look at me very well. Paul was so much full with passion, wanted to testify, but he refused his testimony. And then his team people, the gang he was with, they wanted to kill him. But they plotted to kill Paul. From verse 23, now after many days were passed, the Jews plotted to kill him. But their plot became known to Saul. And they watched the gaze day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and let him down through the wall in a large basket and lowered him down to escape to Jerusalem. My topic today is, who do you have in the basket? Get up and ask somebody, who do you have in the basket? I said, who do you have in the basket? Nobody knew Paul. Nobody knew Saul. They knew him as a murderer. And they probably selected strong macho men with the big basket so that they can lower him secretly over the wall that he will escape. Carrying such a heavy man in a basket and lowering him down. How many know it's not easy for your hands? But did they know what they were holding? I your neighbor, look at me very well. Look at me very well. You don't know who I will be. So hold me in the basket. Are you with me? They held him, and the one in the basket will also be praying, please don't drop me. Come on, tell your neighbor, don't drop me. Tell Pastor Moore, don't drop me. Hold me in the basket. Are you there? And they lowered him to escape. You will escape death. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Come on. Who do they have in the basket? They had a preacher, a saint, somebody who will change the then known world, preaching Thessalonica, Ephesus, shook the devils in Diana Temple, went to Rome in a ship, changed Rome. 
he went to a place they were worshipping idols to the unknown God. And he demonstrated the power of God. In Acts chapter 19, his handkerchief, the apron from his sweat, healed the people. Who is in the basket? Ask your neighbor, who is in the basket? Who is in the basket you are holding? They were holding a deliverer, a preacher, a missionary, a writer who write many books. But they didn't know what they were holding in a basket. Kind of like Moses. When they didn't know what to do with Moses, Exodus chapter 2 verse 1 says, they made a basket and they put him in. And they put him on the Nile River thinking the crocodiles will come and eat him. Say, I shall not die. I will live and declare the goodness of the Lord. Can I hear amen better than what you are saying? The louder your amen, the bigger your miracle. And if your neighbor's amen is louder than yours, he will get the miracle first. Amen. They put the man in the basket who will be the deliverer of Israel. The stammerer will be the deliverer. It was just impossible for him to die. And guess who God called to come? Pharaoh's daughter took that basket. I challenge you. Can I challenge you today? Are you sure? In your neighborhood, there are boys who should belong to your basket. I said in your neighborhood, in the ghetto, there are people who are in the basket. Hold them, hold them, hold them. Hold them. Preach to them. You have children who are stubborn in your basket. They may be in and out of prison, but they are chosen. One day, one day. Jesus will raise them up. Simon Bowles, the parents left her. And the grandmother took her in the basket. Took good care of that boy, that girl, jumping about. But there was something inside him. When you go home, tell your mama, mama, hold me in the basket. Don't give up on me. Pastor, don't give up on me. He won gold. Wilma Rudolph went to Tennessee State, Pasha Polio. But there was something inside him. And the coach saw her trying to run in the dormitory and still have polio. And the coach knew he had somebody in the basket that's not going to let down. She became a champion. You must hold somebody in the basket. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Today, I don't care what law is there, but some young girls, they're holding giants, doctors, lawyers in their belly. They should not divorce, they should not abort them. For they don't know what they're holding in the womb. They have a deliverer like something in the womb. Oh Lord, I like what Kentucky did this week. They made a law, anything in your womb that is having a heartbeat cannot be aborted. May Indiana follow. Can I hear amen? Oh, I'll get trouble here. Hallelujah. Get up, get up and tell your friend, hold me in the basket, hold me in the basket. You don't know who I am. Mama, don't give up on me in school. Hold me. Don't let go of the basket. Hallelujah. Don't give up on those in Cabrini Green. Hello. I remember one day, the Lord took us to go to the prisons, to go preach in Ghana. And they led me to the death row place. People who are ready to die. And they closed, everybody came to listen to Dr. Ablam on radio, Living Manor. That's what they listened to. I preached to them, it is not over till it's over. Yogi Berry said that statement. 
Tell your neighbor, you are not too old. You are not too old. You will be revived. You are not on retirement. You are on refirement. Can you hear what I'm talking about? You will score the winning goal. I preach, then I prophesy. I said to some of them, you will not die. You will live and declare the goodness of the Lord. That prophecy lasted 10 years. They were still in jail. Till one day in the election, my president gave a parole and pardoned them. I was in my office when they brought me a note that the prisoners you preach to, they are in your office. Somebody will come and knock your door. They may be converted in a prison. Can I hear hallelujah? In Oklahoma, I was praying in an African-American church, and more than 10 women came. Pastor, pray for my son. He's in and out. I didn't know what is in and out. So I went and asked the pastor, what is in and out? <laughs> I thought it was a hamburger place in California. The prison doors opened. Those two young men came to Mana Bible Institute, full of the Holy Ghost. The story changed. One of them murdered an American from Texas. He wrote an apology to the family, something he could never say. I killed your daughter. We smoked weed. I raped her, clubbed her to death. But now the Lord delivered me and I'm in Mana Mission Church. I ask for your forgiveness. And the family wrote, we are believers. You are forgiving. That young man is all over Ghana television, preaching. Tell another, hold me in the basket. You are chosen. You are appointed. You will not die. You will live and declare the goodness of the Lord beyond in Indianapolis. Can I hear amen? amen? Well, I want to pray. It's okay, I pray. I want to pray because of the song he sang. Show us your glory. Hallelujah. See, Lord, I know my God. He's all over here. His spirit is here. And he is chosen you. He will anoint you, that you will make a difference. Where he sends you, you should go without any question. See, Ananias, he should have hit Saul. But when he came, he said, brother Saul. How you say brother to someone who want to kill you? Brother Saul, the Lord has sent me to heal you. And you will be a witness to the uttermost part of the world. I pray for you. In the name of Jesus. The very first step Paul took said, my Lord. You have to acknowledge Jesus as your Savior. Even if you have acknowledged him already, raise your hands and say, Lord, stay in my life. Lord, guide me, use me to the uttermost part of the world. And the Lord, put your Holy Spirit in my soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I remember your team, we were in a room and they were reading Acts chapter 10 in Cornelius' household. And they wanted me to pray for them. I said, I'll do three sessions. The Lord said, no. But as they were reading that and the Holy Ghost showed to Cornelius' house, suddenly the Holy Ghost came. And I watched them speaking in tongues and prophesy in the mission house. And they gained strength 
They went to Adan Island where there was fetish. They went to Pram Pram. We demolish the stronghold. Spirit of the Lord will come upon you. Are you listening? It's not by might, nor by power. It is by God's choosing. And you are chosen. You are chosen. And he will use you mightily. Some of you will finance the kingdom. You finance the dream of more. Go ye into all the world and preach my gospel. Heavenly Father, as we bring the first session to an end, you've called some young people. You fill them with your spirit. Young, you just raise that hand because God will give you a sign. As many that are chosen, as many that are called, his spirit is upon you. His spirit is in your mouth right now. It will feel like hot tea in your mouth. His spirit is in your hand. You feel like warm heat in your hand. You just wave at me. Young girl, his spirit is in your mouth. Something wants to come out. Nekimos Celia. Bailele Mosaya. I know my God, when I'm speaking, angels are showing up. There's liquid fire going through your chest. He's healing you. He's bringing you salvation. Somebody's feet is warm. Warm. Shared with the gospel of peace. If you felt any of the things I mentioned, just get up on your feet. Be bold. If you felt it. If you felt it. Are you sure? If you felt it, Ekeile Mosaya.